Hello. Today I am uh, here with you with some friends. Some friends? You might be asking yourself, Brian, uh, we don't see anybody but you. What do you mean, friends? <laughs> well, uh, uh, I got some, uh, some, some clams. Some clams? Yeah, you see, um, oof. There's a bee there, another friend. But no, it's um, uh, the Lord put in my heart to, to make an analogy or metaphor with these clams. You see, I work uh, at a grocery store. I work at, uh, in the meat department and we have a seafood section. Now I have to put away the meat and the seafood at the end of the day. Uh, I have the closing shift and um, you know, um, sometimes when I'm putting away the, let's see if I can put this bag away, it's over here, uh, all right. Sometimes when, uh, when, we, when we put away the meat, oh, get my pants wet now. Uh, but when we put away the meat uh, and the seafood, sometimes I notice that uh, we, when we get clams specifically, the, some clams come in like this, as you can see here, nice and fresh looking and closed, very tight, very hard, you see, hard to open, you can't, you can't open it, you know, it's very hard to open it, you see, very, very closed, uh, very hardened, hard. And sometimes we get clams that are uh, a little bit open like this. You see? I'm not sure if you can see that. A little bit open like that. And then sometimes we get clams that are completely shattered, completely broken. Like this one right here, you see? All these pieces all over the place. Oh, look at that. Now, if you know anything about clams, um, a closed clam is supposedly a living clam, an alive clam. It is alive when it's closed. When the clam is beginning, uh, when, it's, when it's open, like this one right here, it means that uh, it's dead. It's a dead clam. And, uh, well, if it's shattered, broken like this, I mean, it's double dead, I guess. <laughs> uh, not much protection there, because it's all uh, shattered there. But nevertheless, those are the three kinds of clams that, that I see all the time. And, you know, I was just thinking about those clams. And I felt the Lord put it in my heart to make this video. I'm going to be sharing some scriptures with you. But before that... Um, I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit of what the Lord showed me um, and put in my heart. You know, the clams reminded me of Scripture. The clams remi reminded me of men, you see, of even salvation as well. And um, something interesting is that uh, the Scriptures tell us that uh, those that are whole, in Mark 2, 17, those that are whole have no need of the physician. You see, they that are sick... Jesus said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And uh, very interestingly here, we can look at this clam that's closed, you see, as uh, people that are sinners, right? Their heart is closed. You see, very hardened hearts. They don't want to open their hearts. To, they don't want this book right here to reveal the thoughts and intents of their heart. They don't come to the light, lest their deeds should be reproved. They hate the light. They don't come to the light. They don't come to God's word because God's word is like a sword. It's likened unto a sword in the scriptures and it'll cut open their heart, you see, and reveal what's inside. You see? And um, on the other hand, 
we have this clam here. Uh, I'll set this aside for now. <clears throat> but this clam right here is wide, uh, wide open. You see, <clears throat> the Lord, you see, reminded me that this kind of is uh, likened unto the hearts of men that that are able to receive salvation. So you need to have your heart opened up a little for for the for the Holy Ghost to come in. And remember what I said: those that are uh, the clams that are open are dead, huh? What does the scripture say about that? We'll be turning in the Bible, in our King James Bible. Hopefully you can follow along with me. But an open clam is a dead clam. Very interesting, huh? Um, opened up, right? And then over here, we got a completely shattered uh, clam. Um, now I'll go into talk a bit about the shattered clam here in a bit, but... So, salvation begins in this state, right? We are all deceived by the world, by Satan, and we have very hardened hearts. We don't want to acknowledge that we're sinners. But when we acknowledge that we're sinners, uh, our hearts open up a little, soften up a little, right? And we seek God, we seek the truth. And we go to God as a sinner, and He saves us. The scriptures tell us that, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So also calling upon the Lord. You see, Mark 2, 17 that I shared with you earlier, acknowledging that you're sick, acknowledging that you're a sinner with a broken heart going unto the Lord. Now, after salvation, um, you see, a Christian is, is not a sinless saint. A Christian is going to sin again. Um, they are saved sinners. That's the truth. Um, we are not justified by our works, but what Jesus did for us on the cross. That's what justifies us and saves us. You see? And uh, a lot of the time, what happens is that we'll revert back to that hardened state. You see? We start off like this. We go like this. We receive salvation. But then... Cares and riches of the world come. You see, the persecutions come. And what do we do? We harden our hearts again. In fear. We're afraid. What are we afraid of? We are, we're afraid of what men think of us. You see, after salvation, we, we no longer are trusting in the Lord. But we fear. And we close up like this clam. You see? We close up again. And we don't want... And we quench the spirit. Right? But... You know, be, there'll be times, you know, sometimes you'll be closed like this, sometimes you open up, sometimes you close, sometimes it's resisting, sometimes you resist the, the Spirit, and sometimes you'll, you, you'll, you'll allow the Spirit to rule in your life. You'll be walking in the Spirit, and then you'll be walking in your flesh. Walking in the Spirit, walking in the flesh, right? Very interesting. Uh, the clam, this open clam reminded me of that, you know? Um, and also... Uh, when we receive rebuke or chastening of the Lord, sometimes we, we harden up again. And we don't want to, uh, you know, receive the Word of God. We don't want to let that in, in our hearts. We don't, want to we don't want to let it enter in our hearts, right? Because we're hardened. See? Clamped. Right? We don't want to receive with meekness the engrafted Word of the Lord. So, just thought I'd bring that up. And also, I have here a very shattered, look at that, shattered clam. Now, you, you, can, you can be saved as long as you open up a little and call upon the name of the Lord and humble yourself, right? And the Holy Spirit will enter into you. You see? But then... There are those that are broken, completely broken like this, you see. The, the Bible refers to, to God as, or Jesus as, as a stone or a rock. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. You see? 
And there's a scripture I'm going to share with you. Oh, there goes my plastic bag. Oh, one second. Ugh. I'll just put that right over here for now. But there's a scripture I'm going to share with you that talks about that um, whosoever goes unto the stone uh, is broken unto it, right? Or whoever falleth upon the stone is broken. We, we're broken. We go to God broken, like this clam right here in my hand. You see that? Broken. But uh, whosoever it shall fall, it shall grind them to powder. Imagine that. Like this is a broken clam. Imagine a clam that's broken into powder. See, if this rock, if Jesus Christ, if God Almighty falls on you and you're one of these hardened clams, you're going to be grinded into powder. Wow. Something to think about, huh? Ground into powder. <clears throat> and we'll go through the scriptures to talk about that, but the scriptures... You know, a lot of time mentioned about broken hearts and being broken and being broken is very important. Um, you have a broken heart, contrite spirit, going to God as a sinner. And you know what? Sometimes you'll realize as a Christian that when you're in that broken state is when you'll find the most precious stones and pearls and gold and, uh, and gold and silver and precious stones, which is in the scriptures, it talks about that it, that those stones and precious precious stones and gold and silver are, are the rewards that we get in the judgment seat of Christ. And um, I have inside this broken clam. See what's inside? It's a pearl. You see? You need to be broken. You see? You need to seek the Lord with humility and meekness. And then you will... Um, once you're saved, of course, earn rewards in heaven. See those pearls, gold, silver. So that's why I bring these up. Now, nevertheless, now let's go into the scriptures. Be a short little study here. Uh, Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. It's the first place we'll turn to in the Bible. Turn in your Bible. To Matthew chapter 21, verses 42 to 46. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the Scriptures, The stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. And this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say I unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone, right here, this stone, see, shall be broken. You see that? But on whomsoever it shall fall, it shall grind him to powder. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, they perceived that he spake of them. <laughs> But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. Hmm. Interesting, huh? You need to go to the stone and fall upon it. Broken like this clam right here. You see? The Lord shall beautify the meek with salvation, the scriptures tell us. The Lord has respect unto the lowly. But the proud he knoweth afar off. Now let's continue. Uh, Luke chapter 20 now. Another place. Let us turn in our Bible to Luke chapter 20. Turn, me, turn with me. Ooh. Luke 20, 17 through 20. Verses 17 through 20. Chapter 20. And he beheld them and said, What is this then that is written? The stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Wow. And the chief priests and the scribes the same hour sought to lay hands on him. And they feared the people, for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. And they watched him and sent forth spies... 
Uh, whoops, wait a second here. Where? Oh, I think I lost the place. 17 to 20. Oh, there we go. Which should fiend themselves just men, that they might take hold of his words, and so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. Wow. Well, that's how much they hated Jesus for that parable. You see? He's talking of himself. You see? He's talking of the father. Of his father. You see? Bam! It'll grind you to powder if you're hardened in your heart like this, right? You might be saved. Your standing might be that you're saved. Or your status, sorry. Your status might be that you're saved, but you're standing? Are you standing on the rock? On this, on, on the foundation of Jesus Christ? Or are you standing on some other foundation? Shaky ground, sand. Are you on sand? Are you on the rock? Something to think about, right? <clears throat> All right. So now let's turn in our Bibles to Psalm 34. Psalm 34. Oh, well. Psalm 34, 18 through 22. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Wow. <clears throat> Let's continue. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Wow. Now, uh, very interesting here again. It's talking about that broken heart. And, and the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such that be of a contrite spirit. You need to open up, right? Open up. Open up that broke that 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 hardened heart and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe the gospel with your heart. Believe that you know Jesus Christ, he died, he was buried, and he rose again. Be broken. Contrite spirit. Today's your day of salvation. If you're not saved, and if you're saved and you you're still reverting back to your hardened state. Not good. And we'll talk about that as we continue. But very interestingly here, it says, uh, He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Um, it reminds me of all these pieces here. All these pieces um, that we have here. You know, when we are broken, the Lord will put us back together. You know, in our life, a lot, a lot of the time people... When, they're, when, they be, when, they, when they become saved, when the Lord saves them, right? Um, they, they try to fix their life, put the pieces back together after being broken and calling upon the Lord. They try to put the pieces back together by themselves, by their own will, and they fail miserably. I am, I am uh, very much guilty of doing that myself. I try to clean up my life, you know, and I just kept on going back to those sins and back to those sins. And I just couldn't figure out why. But you see, faith is very important. And if you have no faith in, and have the Word of God and, and you have no personal relationship with God, you know, um, you, you revert back to your pride. You revert back to, to self-righteousness. And you're not trusting. You're, you're quenching the Spirit. You're not trusting in the Lord to guide you. Um, the Lord will not clean up your life. He will chasten you and rebuke you um, for your lack of faith. You see? But... Like we have here, these pieces will be put back together, and and it will be likened unto this clam right here, right? Put back together, the Lord will do it. Trust in the Lord to clean up your life. Don't try to clean it up yourself, but rely on His Word. Have a personal relationship with Him in prayer. Stay humble, stay meek. All right, the Lord will clean up your life. He will sanctify you. That's the sanctification process, right? You come to him broken, and then he's the one that fixes you back up to look like a nice, fresh clam. Right? So let's continue now. <clears throat> the Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. 
So let's go to Proverbs chapter 1. Uh, verse 20 through 33. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. In the openings of the gates in the city, she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you, because I have called, and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Hmm. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of their own, uh, therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. So as you can see there, there's a lot of instruction in righteousness here. Um, and just think about these clams, <laughs> right? Um, and how, you know, you know, reproofs and the ways of instruction are the ways of life, folks. Um, if you reject reproof, chastening, rebuke, um, and it's sound and it's according to the Scriptures, you know, the Scriptures tell us that all the Scripture is given by inspiration of God, given to us for correction, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness. And when somebody comes to you and, and tries to, you know, correct you and uh, using the Scriptures, you know, honestly and you know, you harden your heart and you don't want to hear, you don't want to hear. You start pointing the finger back at, uh, at them. What are you going to do? See? You can't do much for those folks. <clears throat> for as it says in verse 29, For they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They feared what man can do to, unto them more than what the fear uh, what, uh, what, what God can do unto them. They didn't, they didn't fear what God can do unto them as much as they, f they feared what man can do unto them. So reflect. Examine yourself. Now let's continue. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 28. Let's turn in our Bible to Proverbs 28. Um... see here <clears throat> verse 14 happy is the man that feareth all way all way you hear that but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief hmm so don't harden your heart like this open up <laughs> and let the Lord come in and guide you Take your, take your hands off the steering wheel and let the Lord direct your path with His Word. You know, some of us, we get so hardened and we're like, I'm driving! I'm driving! Stay out of my way, people. I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear your honks. Let me just keep on driving on this highway. You're on the wrong road. I'm fine. I don't need your honks. I'm fine. And Boom! They crash. Why? Then hearken unto sound counsel. Honk, honk. Let the Lord drive in your life. Handle that steering wheel, right? Live by faith. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 29. Oh, very close to here. Verse 1. 
He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck and shall suddenly or shall suddenly be destroyed. Or he th let me reread that. <laughs> he that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. Wow. Now think about that. Remember the stone? On whomsoever it shall fall, grind them to powder. Wow. You fear God? Oh. You must, you must fear God. If you're saved, if you don't fear God, God will destroy you. He will destroy your body. Your soul may be saved. But uh, it's important to examine our standing with the Lord, folks. <clears throat> Let's go to Romans chapter 6 now. So again, um, now, after the first and second admonition, reject. If there's a brother or sister, after the first and second admonition, if they reject it, they reject God's word, they reject your counsel, and let the Lord's will be done. Go your own way. Go a different way. Because they're on the wrong road. They're going to lead you to destruction if you follow them. Romans chapter 6. We need to follow Jesus Christ, folks. We need to follow the Lord. We don't need to follow men. All I need is Jesus Christ. <laughs> As a very wise Korean man once told me. <laughs> all I need is Jesus Christ. And that's all the words he knew in English, I believe. Or <laughs> Romans chapter 6. All I need is Jesus Christ and His Holy Word to guide me in my life. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death? Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Knowing this, that their old man is crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death had no more dominion over him. For in that he died, for in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You see, <clears throat> we need to die. We need to be dead. And be risen again. Ye must be born again. Right? We got this clam here, right? It's nice and closed. We need to open up. And then, when we open up, go unto the Lord broken. And then, sanctification can begin. That's why experience is very important if you're in the ministry or something. Full-time ministry. If you're a full-time minister, you need experience. You need sanctification. You need to go to the Lord broken and help and let the Lord fix up your life. You need to stop trying to fix up your life by yourself. Right? Or else you're just gonna become like this hardened hardened clam. Right? And you 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 will resist the Holy Ghost. And the Lord will take no pleasure in you. For without faith, you cannot please the Lord. You cannot please please God. You cannot please the Lord with, without faith and without being broken. Only then can you have the precious pearls. Where is the pearl? There's a pearl in here. Ah, there it is. Oh, precious pearl. Precious stone. When you're broken. That's when it comes in. Um, those are the rewards that you can get from the Lord on, ju on, the, on the judgment day. If, you're, if you um, live your life walking in His Spirit and allowing His Spirit to clean up your life you know, submitting yourself unto the righteousness of God and not trying to establish your own righteousness. 
receiving with meekness the engrafted word of the Lord. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. The last scripture I have planned for you, 23 through 32. Chapter 11, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 32. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wow. See, that chasing of the Lord, you see, you need to be judging yourself, examining ourselves. You know, we are flesh of His flesh, bone of His bones. Folks, brethren, as you see here in the scriptures, remember the Lord's broken body on that cross. He was bruised for our iniquities, right? With His stripes, we are healed. This is my body which is broken for you. Fall on to the stone, broken. All right, brethren? Hopefully this uh, analogy and metaphor was helpful to you. It's getting kind of dark and windy. Um, probably should leave. <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, be strong in faith and uh, repent if you need to and uh, if you're not sure if you're saved make sure you're saved I will leave a salvation message should be popping up soon around here somewhere here here goodbye <laughs>